kind of horse? My friend actually asked after being offered 10,000 rubles, 40 sheep, and a horse for my hand in marriage. We were in a yurt in the Tian Shan Mountains in Kyrgyzstan, and the couple that invited us in were the happy product of an arranged marriage. The husband had six brothers yet to be married off, and the wife wanted to add the funny yet sturdy American to the mix, but I had to politely decline. How did I get here? Well, I love traveling to places I've never been before, naked, so to speak. When you strip away the comforts of your day-to-day -day life, the food in your fridge, the clothes in your closet, the, your familiar routines, and even the comfort of your friends and family, you can feel a little vulnerable or naked. Yeah, a little scary at times, but this process will give you a direct line to the real you, the raw you. People often ask me, what's my favorite place to travel? And I gotta say, it's the next place I've never been, the unknown, the sometimes uncomfortable. I love getting to know my true self. It's becoming ever more difficult to connect with our, our core uh, in this modern world. We have Facebook and Twitter and Yelp and pundits with perfect hair constantly telling us what we should think, making it so difficult to actually form our own assessments of what we experience firsthand. And that's exactly why we need to take the time, put down the phones, and have a fling with adventure. You might have to embrace a little discomfort on the road as well. You might even have to get a little dirty. <laughs> there might be some long, bumpy bus rides, and some days walk through leech-infested jungle, and you might get hot, or you might get cold at night, <clears throat> with rice raining on you from the bamboo slats from above at 3.30 in the morning. Or you might get hungry. Or worse, you might choose to eat what is offered to you by this guy. Meet the headman of a Himba tribe in northern Namibia, in Africa. They had never seen a white person eat their food before. She is not a boar, he exclaimed. And it turns out eating their food was all I had to do to be in like Flynn. But it was terrible. These girls were actually intrigued by me. They, they asked my guide if I was a man or a woman. I was wearing shorts and a loose-fitting tank top, and it wasn't until I pulled my top down that they believed I was a woman. They were really just waiting for me to finish my yogurt, and they trotted off back to the village with my Yoplait container, probably saying, no wonder that white woman wasn't married. She was wearing grandfather clothes. When I gushed how beautiful this Aka woman was in northern Thailand, she said that it didn't matter, that she was just a slave. Her day starts at 3.30 in the morning, preparing the rice for the pig's food, feeding the pigs, preparing the men's food, feeding the men, preparing the women's food, feeding the women, and then she can eat. And it's not until she bears a son that will then marry and bring his new wife back into their longhouse will she get a break. I brought a Polaroid camera to this Aka village on the Laos-China border, but what I should have brought were batteries for everybody's boombox. It was a status symbol, but painful to listen to it was the, as they would walk from one side of the village to the other, showing off with music from bad batteries. I met people that learned English the same way. Even when English isn't spoken, laughter is understood in all cultures. I just heard laughter humorously described as when a smile has an orgasm. <laughs> Remember, being uncomfortable is only a temporary condition. Pretty soon you'll be home, surrounded by all your comforts again, but what you will get to keep are your real, authentic, juicy experiences. And with any luck, you will never come home unchanged. I have a confession to make. I'm a planner, sometimes to a fault. And that's my biggest challenge with traveling naked. It's unsettling for me not to know everything about what's, where I'm going. 
But that's where the magic happens, in between the known, in the somewhat scary place of the unplanned and the unscheduled. When you don't have anywhere else you need to be, it makes it so much easier to be present and to be able to say, yeah, why not, to your next unexpected invitation. And that's why it was a good thing I had an open-ended schedule and some days to spare when my new camel breeder friend in the red turban motioned me to come along and bring your camera. Even with no spoken common language, they didn't speak any English besides the word camel, and I didn't understand Rajasthani except for Shanti, Shanti. It became apparent that I was to be his wingman on a white on a white horse shopping adventure. I'm always honored and humbled when people accept me into their lives. This guy was going to be my window into the wonderful world of horse haggling. My gift to him was I was going to help him in the negotiations as best I could with my third world charades game. Even though he wasn't speaking English, I could tell he was asking me my opinion about the horse. Not that I know anything about horses, but I can play along. Well, I don't know, the back seems a little sway to me, and the, the hip bone poking out is like, mm, that's not so good. We would both pretend to understand each other and nod our heads in agreement. It only took three days and 23 tiny cups of chai to finally seal the deal on a shanty, shanty white horse. Traveling naked not only means leaving your comforts and your schedules behind, but also your old frame of mind. When we travel to faraway places, to unfamiliar lands, and immerse ourselves in cultures we've never seen before, it becomes easier to see the world through fresh eyes. This is the full Monty of naked travel, when we can bear ourselves so much as to leave behind our preconceptions as well. It's these naked eyes we want to cultivate, the ability to perceive the world without filters or bias we might have. This is easier said than done, as I was reminded of when I was invited to photograph a Muslim village wedding in Kashmir, India. Normally, the more different an experience is, the easier it is to let go of assumptions, to experience it in its pure form. And I knew not to expect anything like the lavish Sun Valley weddings that I've grown accustomed to photograph, but I was at least expecting men and women to mingle. Here we have the bride in the corner holding court with the women in the green room, and the groom holding court with the men in the pink room. I was also expecting to take a picture of the bride and groom together, but they're not allowed to see each other yet. They've only had a couple of phone conversations and a super cheesy video that the 25-year-old groom found on the internet. The food was actually delicious, but I did get a chuckle out of their plate presentation. And then I was summoned back to the pink room to photograph the all-important event of makeup being put on the groom. And then back to the green room for the portraits of the bride, but no smiling. It's actually a solemn event. Um, it's more of a goodbye feast for an arranged marriage, and no one wants to seem happy that the bride is leaving the village, perhaps forever. Except for this girl. She smiled in all the photos. She must want more likes on Facebook or something. <laughs> and then the groom leaves under separate cover in a car covered with plastic flowers. And then the bride is ushered by her parents under full burqa uh, to continue the celebration back at the village where she will eventually meet her husband. It's tradition that the bride be sad to leave her family, but she did have to force her cry to be heard out from under there. I was warned not to expect the familiar, but that Muslim wedding wasn't even close to what I wasn't expecting. Ralph Waldo Emerson urges us to become a transparent eyeball. 
He means to have an eye that is absorbent rather than reflective in order to see the world in its truest, most authentic form. And once we've practiced this, using fresh eyes while traveling out there, it will be easier to return home with these same transparent eyeballs and view the familiar, your backyard, your hometown, without preconceptions, without filters or bias. So can anybody guess what this is? It's not an overview of a reef or anything like that. Guess? Huh? Hey, you're getting close. It's actually a detail of a rusty car in a junkyard here in Idaho. <laughs> Adi Ashanti reminds us, grace is all around us if we only have the eyes to see it. I will leave you with an invitation, an invitation to get naked, to shed your familiarities and your schedules, to embrace discomfort, and to travel free and unencumbered from preconceptions and expectations in order to have more juicy, robust, authentic life experiences wherever you might go. For that is the best way to experience the true beauty in your life, is to travel through it naked. Thank you.